we are joined, as promised, by Lakers writer for The Athletic, Jovan Buha. Johan, thank you so much for joining us. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Thank you guys for having me. Let's start here. You know, we're, we're used to talking about Kings and, and the teams that the Kings can't beat. It's nice to be on the other side of the shoe for once with the Lakers unable to beat the Kings so far this season. What is it specifically from, from your perspective that the, that the Kings do that the Lakers just have a problem with? I, I really think it's the two-man game between Fox and Sabonis. Uh, there are some similarities with the Jokic Murray two man game, which also gives the Lakers problems. Uh, they've lost eight consecutive games to Denver. They've lost six to seven to the Kings over the past two years. Uh, so those two teams in in particular, just w- with the unique uh, dynamic of their offense, with a passing big uh, who who can be a dribble handoff hub right. and uh, operate from the elbows, and then a, a lightning quick uh, point guard. And obviously in Fox's case, you know, arguably the fastest player in the league or, or in that conversation. So um, I think, De- you know, with De'Aaron, they don't have a guy who can take that assignment and, and lock into him and, and hang with his foot speed. Uh, so he has a physical advantage against whoever the Lakers put on him. Uh, and then Sabonis has played very well against Anthony Davis. He's 9-0, and or his teams rather, are 9-0 and against AD's teams uh, during, you know, the, the, the course of their careers. Uh, so he's gotten the better of him and um he, he kind of fits the profile of you know anthony davis can uh tend to struggle against bigger you know bruising big men who uh, can get into his legs and and kind of uh you know push him around a little bit in the paint and and that's what uh you know domas has been able to do uh in in some of their matchups so i think those two guys in particular um you know have been able to match or surpass lebron and ad and that's ultimately been uh, the, the difference, in my opinion, in, in most of their recent matchups. Yeah, and I mean, AD is one of the most versatile bigs that we have in, in this league, and so it is a little surprising to see him just kind of be dominated so 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 much on, on uh, one side of that matchup. Is there anything you can see AD doing that could maybe help him out in that matchup? I mean, maybe making more jump shots and pulling Sabonis out, like just trying to, because it seems like the physicality is really the thing that AD struggles with in that in that one-on-one matchup. What, what can AD really do to try and get around that fact? Yeah, I think the, the Lakers could be a little bit more creative with how they use him offensively. Uh, I think in rewatching the you know his possessions uh, against the Kings. Uh, from last week, like it was a lot of ISOs and post ups, and I felt like that played into Sabonis's advantages as a post defender, as a guy who who's a bit heavier and stronger than, right. than AD. Um, so I, I think leveraging his size and athleticism, because w- when AD is on the move, that's where he's really difficult to stop. Because having a seven foot athletic guy w- with the the level of skill and finishing that he has. It is something that most defenses struggle with, right? So uh, I think getting him more involved in, in pick and rolls, um, maybe uh, some more like stack actions where uh, they have someone back screening for him. You know, maybe he comes up, screens for LeBron, D'Angelo Russell or, or Austin Reeves comes and, and sets him a back screen um, as he's rolling and like just kind of mixing it up a little bit and right. not being as um, stagnant, as predictable as I felt like they were at times. And, and that's kind of the, the ebb and the flow with the Lakers offense is, uh, when they're running organized things, like they're they're very difficult to stop, and they've been one of the you know top five offense over the last couple of months. But there are also times where they're disorganized and they're kind of freelancing out there, and that's when you see it kind of devolve into iso ball. And like they have the talent to win more often than not, but I think in this particular matchup, they have to be very uh, you know they, they, they have to make a concerted effort to target Sabonis in different ways and, and not play to his strengths, which to me are if it's like a ground battle, Sabonis right. is going to win that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Talking to Jovan Buha, Lakers writer for The Athletic. Jovan, what do you think? We, we talk a lot about the expectations for the Kings. And, you know, with the Thunder taking that step and the Timberwolves figuring it out, the Kings are in a normal, normal season or without those two teams, Kings are in that four, five range. And because of those teams, Figured it out. They've bumped now down to the 6-7 range, and we were looking at the amount of money that the Kings have spent this season. They're number 23, so really not that high. 
what do you think has gone wrong for the Lakers to be sitting here battling to to stay out of the play in with with the Warriors and all these other teams? There have been question marks about Darvin Ham. What went wrong or what has gone wrong for the Lakers this season? I think it's been a combination of things. Uh, first and foremost, they, they have been one of the more injured teams in, in the league, and it hasn't really affected their top players. So that's where I, I think, like, optically, them right. using the injury excuse doesn't really uh, hold as much weight given AD, LeBron, mm-hmm. Austin Reed, D'Angelo Russell. Th- those four guys, their four best players, have largely been healthy. But it's been the supporting cast around them where, uh, and, and I thought D'Lo had an interesting remark uh, yesterday at a practice where he was basically like every single night it, it seems like we have a guy stepping in to do something that they're not accustomed to doing or, or stepping into a certain role that, that they haven't played the last few games and it's like it's just kind of that that constant discovery process on a nightly basis that it, it just leads to a lack of continuity and sometimes guys just being asked to do things that they're not capable of doing uh, but I also think part of that is on the coaching staff um, you know I, I think that the Lakers took too long to get to this starting lineup, which has been their best starting lineup of AD, LeBron, Rui, Austin, and D'Lo. Those are their five best players. Those are their five highest paid players. And those are all five guys that helped them make the Western Conference Finals last year. And the fact that it took them almost 50 games to get to that lineup, uh, I think like that, uh, I just, I don't really understand it. So uh, some of the lineup and rotational decisions, I I think have, have certainly been, um, head scratching at times. Uh, but I think the biggest thing has just been the West is deep and we kind of seen it like the, you know, healthier teams have benefited and, and the teams that have been a little bit more banged up like Dallas, the Lakers and golden state. Those are the teams that are eight, nine, 10 right now, uh, in the plan mix. But, uh, it, it's, it's been, they've been a confounding team because on paper, if you told me LeBron and AD were going to be as healthy as they've been, I would have guessed this team would have been in the right. home court advantage mix. And for them to be, a nine seed and, and really several games back from, from number eight. Like it's it just, it, it, they've been confusing for most of this season. Yeah. I, I mean, one of the, the confusing things for me, I mean, the Kings have, have really struggled to find that third consistent third score all season long. And it seems like D'Angelo Russell here recently is really, something has clicked with him uh, here recently and, and he's been shooting the lights out. What, what have you seen? That's, that's really switched with, uh, with D'Lo here recently. Yeah, so I think it was a couple things with D'Lo where, one, uh, he had an injury late in December where he missed a few games, and he's mentioned multiple times now that during that that period, as, as he was just on the bench kind of uh, observing things through a different lens, uh, that he kind of figured out that the best way to uh, complement LeBron and AD was not to be deferential, was not to be submissive, was not to be passive, but was actually to just play his game and, and sort of be like, there, there's going to be times where I have to look these guys off and and that's going to keep defenses honest because the, the game plan against the Lakers typically is just load up the paint because you know, LeBron's trying to get downhill. AD's trying to get downhill. You, you want to force those guys to take jumpers and, but you, you need guys to make shots to kind of spread out the defense and keep them honest. So I think D'Lo kind of had this Eureka moment of, um, you know, I just got to play my game and, and sometimes it's going to be, looking off LeBron in transition and and taking a pull-up three. Like sometimes that's going to be running a pick and roll with AD. And instead of throwing him the pass, I I go to the rim and I try and finish. Like I have to be aggressive to to embolden them. And then he had a game in in mid-January, which really set things off where LeBron was out. He goes for then a season high, 37 points against Utah. And from that point, he's just been rolling offensively. So I think it was just kind of that, that early January time where he figured out like, the best version of of me is ultimately going to be hmm. what what helps LeBron and AD. And we've seen, like, to me, this is not only his best stretch as a Laker yeah. during his two different tenures there, but like, considering that he's helping a team actually win and, and really contributing at a high level, like, this could be the best stretch of his career. And it, it's been really remarkable to see because um, he was coming off of December where he it was a very rough month. He, he got benched, like. It was a a tough few weeks for him there, and then to kind of come out of that and now be playing the best ball of his career uh, has been really impressive. Yovan, before we get you out of here, we got to ask the question. <laughs> LeBron James, is he in a Laker jersey next season? 
Uh, yes, I, I believe so. Um, okay. It's to me, it's just going to be a matter of is he in a Laker jersey for one more season, or is he in a mm -hmm. Laker jersey for multiple seasons? And I, I think that that's a LeBron question in terms of just his future and, and what he wants. But um, you know, if, if I had to predict, I, I think he uh, opts out and signs an extension for two or three years. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also the chance he just uh, you know exercises that player option and keeps it year to year as he's tended to do. Uh, with, with previous contracts, but um, LeBron wants to be in LA. The Lakers want him in LA, uh, and I, I think they they will figure something out to keep that partnership going. Yovan, actually, one more real quick before sure. we get you out of here. I have to ask. It went pretty viral. The Kobe statue that had the the misprint of the of the 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 box score. How, yeah. how does that happen? And is is there plans to to get it fixed? Yes. Yeah, so uh, the the. <laughs> How it happens, I'm I'm not quite sure. Um, you know, you would think they would just go verbatim, you know, directly off of the box score right. and, and just use that. And and the box score was correct, so it wasn't a matter of like the box score had typos and, and right. they just applied that. Um, but this has been something the Lakers have actually been aware of for weeks since uh, the the launch of the statue. It was just a matter of when this was going to come out, and, and then a a I believe it was a German journalist uh, tweeted about it, and and that's what went viral. So they were aware of it, and there are plans to uh, address it. They're going to replace the box score. Um, of course, it's it's a statue. It's it's not exactly like the easy. You, you don't just right. like you know uh, erase <laughs> yeah. it and and put a new one on. So like th there's going to have to be a process. I would assume after the season, just when right. it's you know they they can kind of dig in there in the off season. But like there's also going to be two more Kobe statues. So I think there's going to be some extra attention uh, on those two, making sure there are no typos and this doesn't happen again. It's incredible. Yovan Buha, this has been great. Lakers writer for The Athletic. Johan, are you in the building tonight? Are you in Sacramento? I am. I am in Sacramento. Okay, in we right will. Now, and I'll be there tonight. There you go. We will definitely say yeah. what's up to you, man. Thank you so much. Let's do this again. I don't want the Kings to see the Lakers in the play in, but if they do, we will definitely have you back on. Thanks so much. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. When we return, continuing the conversation, it's time for everybody's favorite segment, Pocket Watching, Siles and Watkins, Sacktown Sports. Sweep L.A. The Kings go for the season sweep tonight against the Lakers. Here's a great steal. Malik Monk ahead to Keon Ellis. A full block. Throwdown, and the Kings have a 20-point lead as the defense has just been spectacular. The Kings and Lakers tonight at 7. On your home for Kings basketball, Sacktown Sports and the Sacktown Sports app. It's Coach Doug Christie here to remind you, if you want a deal that's a slam dunk, go see the winning team at Folsom Lake Ford. Folsom Lake Ford is your truck headquarters with all your American-made favorites, like America's best-selling F-Series, F-150s, and Super Duties, or spacious new Explorers and Expeditions, plus a huge selection of Broncos and Bronco Sports, all in stock now at Folsom Lake Ford, right here in Sacramento. You can buy any new Ford with zero down on approved credit, save big with low interest finance rates, and Folsom Lake Ford always pays top dollar for your trade. Check out the huge selection of inventory online at FolsomLakeFord.com or stop by the dealership to see their most recent arrivals. Looking for something special? Give them a call. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me now? You got me? I'm the Verizon guy. Should be able to, right? Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, So, yeah, continuing what we were talking about earlier, um, about the best one of the season, I was thinking about it. And what is the argument against last night? Like, like 75% are saying, yeah, for sure. Last night was the win. The 25%, that's a pretty big percentage. But, like, you're saying the Warriors win. Um, 
you know, in the playing game, Draymond turns it over late. Malik had the insane play at the end. That was that was awesome. But like last night, the argue the only argument against it is that Middleton was out. But then you go, okay, Keegan Murray's out. So like what I just I want to know if there are any of the I don't want to say detractors, any of the uh, 25% in here that want to let me know why the other team, what other win was better and why. Like, why, how can you make the argument against the Kings winning last night being the best win of the season? Clippers felt big. Yeah. I feel like the road doesn't matter for the Kings. I mean, yeah. Paul George was out, though, if I'm not mistaken, right, Aaron? God, it's so bright in here. Look, I'm glowing. Anyways, is this better than commercials, or is this just super boring? Uh, Warriors win because they had our number last year playoff. I want to shut the Warriors fans up. Yeah, that's more emotional, and I get it. It's um, it that's a more emotional win. I don't know if it was a better win just on paper. You know, Middleton's been out for a while, so that doesn't matter. Bucks are used to playing without him. That's true. We aren't used to playing without Keegan and also losing Lyles. That's very true. Uh, another point on Middleton being out is that, or Middleton and Keegan being out, is that Keegan is trying to be our Middleton too. So that makes it a little closer. We are, Kings are a very emotional fan base. I don't know how you can't be emotional after being out of the playoffs for 16 years and then jumping back in with, uh, <laughs> you know, jumping back in and then having that heart break against the warrior it just is intensified i think that's why everyone's so critical this year too the t-wolves one on the road was big anyways we're coming back here i'm gonna i'm gonna hop out i'm trying to talk to you guys one more time Rider for the athletic going to be saying what's up to him tonight for sure what'd you think about his breakdown chris on what the lakers might do tonight yeah it'll be interesting i mean he he mentioned the uh the fox a bonus two-man game which we actually don't see too much of but i mean i think just in general when those two guys are getting into their actions independently whether it be fox just taking isos or Sabonis doing what he does, getting everybody involved. Um, I think it's kind of tough for the Lakers, too. I mean, they're they're You know, they do have LeBron James out there who is, even though he doesn't look like it, he is. He's he's up there. Is he 39 these days? Um, You know, that's that's a guy that you it's crazy to say, but you might want to attack him a lot defensively because, uh, you know, with how the Kings play, with the amount of movement and just running uh, full blown sprints involved like that's. That's not really something that LeBron's trying to do at this point uh, of his career and definitely not at this point in the season. So, um, you know, I, I think uh, I think if anything, it's uh, it's interesting to hear that, the you know, they it's it's like Malik said last year. They, I just you just don't often think like they they got to worry about us. We so much worry about, oh, who's going to guard Giannis? Oh, my gosh. Like A.D. and LeBron. How do you stop that? Well, the Kings have a lot of a lot of problems that they present teams as well. And I think. I think we've seen more times now than than not that the Kings present a lot of problems for these Lakers. We are 10 minutes away from your chance to winning Hassan Minaj tickets at Safe Credit Union Performing Arts Center March 29th. That is at 1 o'clock. You are not going to want to miss that. Can you answer a question for me? And sure. Yeah, I think I know ball, but I'm not going to fake this one. 
what is it exactly that Torian Prince is there to do? <laughs> what is he? And I don't want to say this because then he might go off tonight. But what is it exactly that you do here? He's there to upset Laker fans, apparently. Uh, There's always one e- each season. It's crazy. Uh, they the Laker fans are not fans of Torian Prince, and they're definitely not fans of how much uh, uh, Darvin Ham seems mm-hmm. to love Torian Prince. I, you know, my my short answer is I think he's there to do what we saw Malik Beasley do yesterday. And that's chuck it up. Just put up, put up 10 threes and hope yeah. maybe you hit five of them. You might hit two. You might hit none. I think last time he was zero of seven or something like that. And he was pulling. He was pulling. He was pulling like crazy. Um, so, I mean, I, I guess he's just kind of their X factor. He's their mm-hmm. wild card. If he's hitting on that day, might be tough to beat the Lakers. But if he's not, then, you know, that's, that's definitely somebody uh, that that you want to to have continue to shoot the ball because he is unafraid to do it. And the Lakers kind of like Jovan said there, they need other guys to hit threes. That's yeah. what's made D'Lo so big for them is the fact he's hitting 45% of his threes since that uh, game in Utah that Jovan talked about. They need their guys to win. You know, Mike Brown's been preaching tons about spray threes. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what Jovan's talking about right there. LeBron and AD getting downhill and if they don't have it at the rim, they're going to kick it out to their guys. It's on those guys to hit it. And that's that's what Torian Prince is there for. He just hasn't been doing it. Yeah. So the spray three thing, that's not really unique to the Kings. No, no, that, no. That, that's just what the, driving kick is another way of saying right, it. That, that's just what the the NBA is right now. Speaking of, there were some beautiful look. It's always beautiful. That's what I've always said about point guards. It's one thing to find more elite passing in general, but a lot of times a point guard either looks great or not so great based on whether or not exactly. the shots go in. Exactly. And last night it looked beautiful. All the spray threes. It it did. It did seem that the Kings were not getting as deep as they had been, which is what Mike Brown had been Preaching. on them yeah. over and over and over again. But there were some beautiful spray threes last night. Yeah, no, I mean, it looked great. Um, I think Mike Brown mentioned the number they took. I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said it was it was a number that they're comfortable hitting. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they've I think Mike said uh, previously that they were averaging around 11. Uh, so it, it was a lot better than that. And you saw it. I mean, it, it felt like it uh, when you look at, you know, HB having four threes, mm-hmm. a lot of those HB lives in the corner uh, and, and just kind of spots up. They got to look for him, too. I mean, I think a lot of it was. It's it's tough to find the balance of attacking the paint, but at the same time, you know, spreading and looking for those threes, but then not only looking for those threes, because I think that was the problem at the beginning of the year was it felt like they were just driving like it was like it was a drill, like they yeah. knew they were going to pass out and not actually have any intention of scoring at the rim. And the so, other team knew exactly. They they didn't care. And they mm-hmm. said, OK, like whatever. Um, and it's on the Kings to to make it the same way it's on the Lakers to hit those shots. The Kings absolutely have to hit those open looks. And that brings us right back to our guys, Kevin Herter and HB, who and and that makes them, you know, their performance is so vital. If they're not hitting shots, it really puts a lot of pressure on De'Aaron and Domas and, mm-hmm. and Malik to create his own. Um, and we've seen that those three guys have definitely been up to task here recently. Uh, but against the team that you just played on Wednesday, they've got a little bit more recent intel on you. It's going to be a tough one tonight. They're probably not going to be able to win in the same exact fashion that they won uh, just a week ago. They're they're going to have to. It's much like a playoff series in a right. way. You've got to, you know, it, it's adjustments and then how you adjust to those adjustments. So even if the the Kings or the Lakers get off to a good start, you, you still got to wait for that second half because there's going to be more adjustments made. This is the last two, time that these two teams are playing each other. This is a really important mm-hmm. game for both sides. Kitchen sink's going to be thrown out there, and it's going to be interesting to see who's got the better game plan and who makes the better adjustments. Yeah, when we return, we will get into that pocket watching and explain why it is so important for either team to get a W tonight. Also, your chance to win Hassan Minaj.